What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're going to check out the new version of SketchUp for iPad. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So we've been waiting on the iPad version of SketchUp for a while. It's been in beta for, um, I can't even remember how long now, but it's just now been released for everyone to use. So there's more information about the new version of uh, SketchUp for iPad in this blog post, which I can link to in the notes down below um, if you want to find out more information. Or we can do what we're going to do, and we're just going to jump over into the iPad and take a look at what we can do in order to use it. So you can download SketchUp for iPad by going into the App Store on your iPad and looking for SketchUp. Note that with this, we'll talk about payment in a second, but this is a part of the SketchUp subscription, meaning that it is a paid app. Now you do get a seven day free trial with it. So if you do wanna try it out, um, you can download it from the App Store and give it a try. But do note that it is used as a part of a SketchUp subscription. All right, so just real quick, let's jump into the plans and pricing just so we can understand what this is contained with. Um, so this is basically, first off, they've kind of rebranded their offerings a little bit. So there's SketchUp Go, um, which is going to give you access to the web version. I think that was previously the shop version, I think. So you get some of those additional features inside of the web version, um, like the outliner, custom materials, other things like that. And then you also get access to the iPad version of SketchUp. So that one is the $119 a year. I think that comes out to like $12 a month or something like that um, on a monthly basis. Um, in addition, you've also got the pro version, which is the more typical version, right? That's the one that comes with the desktop version as well as layout. That also gives you access to the full featured web version and the iPad version. There's also the studio version, which has some other stuff like being able to work with point clouds as well as I think it might come with a V-Ray license. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that one, but that's like the full on studio version. Um, all, all three of those are gonna come with access to the iPad version. So I think at a minimum, you have to have this SketchUp go in order to get access to the iPad version. And so when you open up the app, you're gonna get a page that looks something like this and note that this is basically um, built around storing your models in Tremble Connect. So it's very similar to what you see inside of the free version of SketchUp. So um, basically what we've got is we've got options in here to open up your different models that you've been working on. So for example, when I did a table model in here, if I was to click on that, that's gonna open this up and I can actually access that model inside of SketchUp for iPad right here. And so it's like the full model that I've used in here. This is in wireframe mode but it's the complete model, right? So if I go into my styles, for example, and adjust this, you can see how it's the full model that's in here. And I can actually get in here and I can make adjustments to this. Um, I can add dimensions, all those different things, um, things like that. So it's really easy to use. So if I click across here, right? For example, I could add dimensions to my model. And so let's go ahead and let's open up and we're gonna go ahead and don't save. Let's open up this dance center model that comes with this just to get kind of an idea of the way that this works. So the first thing to be aware of is the way that navigation works inside of this tool because there's multiple different ways to navigate inside of your model. So the one everybody's probably going to start with is you're probably gonna start just by using your finger on the screen. So you're just gonna come in here and you're just gonna click and drag around. Notice if you click and drag with your finger, it's going to orbit around the model. So using one finger, it's gonna orbit. Um, you can pinch to zoom like this. So just pinch in to zoom into the model. Or if you put two fingers on the screen and drag, you can pan. So navigation is fairly intuitive um, using your hand right here. Notice how you can click on different things in order to access them as well. So theoretically, you could come in here and work with like materials and other things like that. Notice how I'm double clicking in here, but theoretically you could come in here and you could adjust materials just by clicking in here with your finger. Now, that being said, that's not going to be the best way to do this, in my opinion, but it is definitely going to be a way that you can do this. I think that you can actually come in here and draw with your finger as well. But again, notice how your result maybe is gonna be not the best. Um, so you can also come in here and you can use like a Apple Pencil or something like that. Um, so I just have this pencil that I bought online. But basically what I can do is I can toggle that on and then I can click on my screen and I can do things like drawing really easy. So for example, I can draw something, then I can select it. I could find like the push-pull tool right here and I could extrude it up. So you can do this with the pencil as well. So you can move this around. You can also use the pencil to apply different materials. So like, let's say I wanted to apply like a screen material or something like that. Notice how I can do that with the pencil 
fairly easily. So think you can definitely work in here using a pencil or a stylus if you decide that you want to do that. Now, that being said, my recommendation if you're going to do this is I would use a Bluetooth mouse. So for me, for example, I have a Bluetooth mouse from 3D Connection, the guys that make the 3D mice, um, that I've paired with this from a Bluetooth standpoint. Um, I don't think you need a special mouse, you just need a mouse that is wireless and will do Bluetooth pairing. And if you do that, you can actually use that to navigate around inside of SketchUp um, using the mouse itself. And so for me, right, I find it most helpful to just use a mouse like this because then it's actually really close to just modeling with a mouse and keyboard on your actual um, on your actual computer itself. And so I will say it is helpful to also have a keyboard for um, SketchUp as well. So you can come in here, for example, and you can just model just by drawing on top of surfaces and just clicking on different tools. But like we talk about inside, um, like we talk about, it's usually easy to use something like a keyboard because then that's going to give you keyboard shortcuts that are going to allow you to access different tools, right? So now I can use the spacebar key, I can draw things like circles, I can tap the P key. All of the keyboard shortcuts are actually really close to what you might find on your actual computer. So from an experience standpoint, um, this is probably closest to like the online version of SketchUp, I would say. So it looks the same, right? So you've got all the different uh, tools on the right hand side of the page, other things like that. Now, what I do like about this is it's really um, pretty full featured, right? You've got most of the modeling tools that you would typically use. So it's really easy, for example, to come in here, select a face and then add things like materials and other things like that. So you've got access to the material library that's in here. Um, so you can apply different colors, different materials really easily. Um, you can definitely do that. So you can also add textures in here as well as a part of this tool. So from like a fully featured modeling standpoint, um, I would say this is a really great implementation of the way this tool could work. Now, one tool that I really like, and there's a bunch of tools in here, right? But in general, you're going to model in pretty much the same way. So there's actually tools in here for like creating animations between your different scenes, other things like that. So if you click on the play button inside of your scene section, you can actually create those animations. You can also save scenes for navigation. You can adjust styles. So it's really a pretty complete implementation, in my opinion, of SketchUp um, for iP iPad. Um, one tool that I really like about this, and let's go ahead and close this. And so one tool I really like about this that they've added that's more of an iPad specific tool is the ability to add markups. So notice if you click on the three dots over here, um, there's a number of tools in here, things like follow me, all of those. If you're looking for those, you can find them on, by clicking on the three dots, but there's also a tool that's iPad specific called markups. And so you can go to the top here and click on markup. What that's gonna do is that's gonna pop up a little window that's gonna allow you to add markups to your scene, right? So let's say for example, that you wanted to make a note about a corner right here. And I find markups are easiest added by like a pencil or a stylus or something like that. You can do it with your mouse, but they never really look quite as good, right? They're not as smooth. The hand-drawn markups, in my opinion, look a little bit better. But what you can do is you can come in here, you can add circles, um, you can like highlight different things. So let's say you wanted to note something about the glass or something like that. You could also write in here. So if you wanted to note that this needed to be smaller or something like that, you can do that. And then you can also select your markups and move them around if you decide that you wanna do that. But the cool thing about this is these markups, when we click on done, actually get saved as a part of a scene, right? So now, notice how my scenes has a markup in here. Well, if I was to rotate out of this, right, I'm going to lose them, they're gonna go away. But if I wanna get back to them, all I have to do is just click on markups right here. Now, can we edit the markups? I'm not 100% sure, let's give it a try. So if we go into markup right here, um, it looks like, yeah, you can edit the markup that's in the current scene. So if you do want to come in here and make an adjustment, right? If you wanted to get rid of this, for example, you can do that um, using the tool. And then note that we do have other things in here as well, things like section planes. So you can use this to create sections and other things like that. So like I said, I'm pretty impressed with the implementation of the tool 
on iPad. All right, so overall, I'm fairly impressed with the app so far. Um, it's kind of like having basically the full featured um, online version on your iPad. So obviously you're not gonna get extensions or anything like that. But overall, I think it's a great way to kind of do mobile 3D modeling. Now, is it something that you're gonna wanna get a subscription just to access the tool? I'm not 100% sure. Um, I think for a lot of people, the answer is probably yes, if you look at it from a $12 a month standpoint, but it really kind of depends on your budget. I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below about that, how much you think that you're gonna be using this. I think it's a no-brainer if you've already got a subscription to go ahead and start trying it. So leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.